Hello, this is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, inverse probability functions, and particularly we're going to talk about inverse geometric probability and how we can program such a function into the Inspire because it's not built in there. So remember in general that a cumulative density function, CDF, is always a sum of a corresponding PDF. So the probability that x is less than or equal to some number a is the value of the CDF of a. And the way you find that is you take the PDF of x values where the x's are less than or equal to a, take all of those PDFs, those probabilities, of the individual values of x, and then add them all up. Now, most of the time we're kind of out of luck in the sense that there's no shortcut for this. There might be a nice formula for the PDF, and often there is, but then to, to find the CDF, we just simply have to just literally find everything in that table up to a certain point and add them up. And we might be able to automate this with a calculator program, which we've done in some cases, or that's built in, but that's basically what we have to do. There's no real nice real formula. But an exception for this is the geometric distribution. And the di geometric distribution, we can use what we know from algebra about the sum of an infinite geometric series to derive this following formula for the CDF. So the probability that x is less than or equal to a is the CDF of a, which is a sum of the PDF, but that's also turns out to be just 1 minus q to the a power. Now I've omitted the details here. Um, I may or may not get back to that in a, another video later showing you how that's derived, but it uses so this little thing about geometric series from algebra. Now. If we assume that this, this CDF of A is equal to some number C, that we know the C, we can put this equal to that C, and we know the Q. Well, we know P, and from P we can find Q. And so we're looking for the A, which is our unknown. So we want to solve for A. So here's what we do. Watch the formula here. So we've got this form of this problem, and this is the form in general for an inverse probability problem. It's a cumulative probability is known. So the probability that x is less than or equal to a equals c, we know the c. And the question is, what's the a? So in other words, another way to say that is we have CDF of a equals c. We know the output. We want to find the input. So in this particular example, we have this nice formula that CDF of a can be rewritten as 1 minus q to the a and that's equal to c. Now we're going to use a little algebra here to solve for a. This is, uses some basic facts from, say, Algebra 2 or, or uh, maybe college algebra, uh, including some logarithms. Okay, so let's take a look at the steps of the algebra here. We want to get the a by itself. So we get rid of the 1 first by adding negative 1 to both sides. That wipes it out on the left, but also puts a negative 1 on the right. Now notice the order of operations here. This says take q to the a power first, then take the opposite of that. It's not negative q to the a, but the opposite of q to the a. You know, the, the q to the a is first. So to get rid of that negative, we just multiply by negative 1, turns that positive. Then on the right side, that makes negative c plus 1, which we can rewrite as 1 minus c. So now the problem is this a is up here by up in the exponent. We'd like to get it down. It's up too high to reach. How do we get it down? Let's throw a logarithm, a log at it, and knock it down. So what we do is we take the logarithm of both sides. So we take the log of the left equals the log of the right. Now, this looks like we may have made it worse, but we know a property of logarithms that says this exponent can be brought out front of the logarithm. That is essentially the same property that says a power to a power is found by multiplying the powers. Now the a is down here where we can get our hands on it. We can divide both sides by the natural logarithm of q to get the a by itself. Of course, that means we have to divide the other side by a log of q as well. And so now we have a is, is uh, we solve for a. a is the natural log of 1 minus c over the natural log of q. Remember, q is just 1 minus p. So now we have this nice expression in terms of the two things that we know, the p, uh, which identifies which geometric distribution we're talking about, and the c that we know, which is our cumulative probability. And this allows us to solve for a. So this one, we have just a real nice formula that, that just right, right away solves for that A value. 
Uh, however, uh, this A value is typically not a whole number. And, of course, the input for the CDF uh, or PDF for a geometric, the random variable X, has got to be a whole number. In fact, it's got to be a natural number. It's got to be 1, 2, 3, so forth. Can't be 0, can't be negative, can't be something in between, like 1 and a half. Okay, so um, what we will typically do is we'll either get this A that we have, and then we'll either round it down, one, down or we'll round it up depending on our needs. So with this, armed with this formula, we're now going to create a program, actually not a program, but a function for, uh, well, in the next few videos, we'll do a function for both the uh, Inspire and a program for the TI-84 a few videos down the road that will give us uh, a geometric uh, probability function inverse, so an inverse probability function for a geometric.